Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is actually shot in Calgary a couple of months back when we were there. And I, the reason why I did not uh, put this on Today Talkies channel is because it's more in line with what Grow With Nav is all, is all about. And we'll talk about how, how Airbnbs actually can improve cash flow, especially in Calgary. But in general, if you see this video, you will get an idea of how Airbnbs work. So let's get back to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Abhi bhi hum Rachel ke ghar pe hi hain, but we are talking about something really different. Ab aap logon ko pata hai ki humare ko October mein, uh, jo humara seat wala ghar hai, we'll get the position for that. And I was just exploring the opportunity of, instead of renting it out, can I do an Airbnb instead? Uh, and uh, the reason why we are doing this is because Rachel has an Airbnb in Mahogany, which is very close to where we bought the house. And she's airbnb it. And she's actually making good cash flow from it. So we wanted to understand the secret sauce. Uh, can everyone do it? What are the risks? Uh, what is the cash flow? Uh, how do we compare, you know, in terms of numbers between if you rent it out or if you Airbnb? So we'll talk all about that. So the first question that I have, Rachel, is that why did you decide to do Airbnb? You know, I always knew there was a big opportunity there i could see that the numbers could potentially mm -hmm. be huge um i've always specialized in investment real estate and a ton of my clients have asked me about this mm. um i never sell anything that i haven't done personally mm. so i said to a lot of my clients let me do it myself for six months mm. once it's done if it doesn't work out i've wasted my money and you're good mm. um, but if it does work out i will bring you back the same white glove service that i did uh with the regular long long-term rentals <laughs> so I piloted it myself mm -hmm. um, just to see the numbers and it's doing e extremely well, exceedingly mm. well, but higher than my highest imagination. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So let's talk about numbers now. So, um, so for, uh, you know, for a rental property, if you buy a rental property, which is like a single family, so if you have a single family, it yep. has an, has a downstairs suite yep. and it has an upstairs one, right? Similar to what we have, uh, but it ours is semi detached, a smaller one, yep. but it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't. It, uh, the cash flow will be the same. So assuming that it's like a $600,000 property, 650, whatever, our overall expenses with mortgage, uh, you know, if you are renting it out for mortgage insurance, you know, property management, everything, all inclusive is say twenty five hundred dollars, yeah. and we rent out the upstairs, uh, you know, long term for two thousand dollars, and downstairs for say a thousand dollars, we yeah. make five hundred dollars pre tax. Yeah. Uh, so that's a typical, uh, you know, what we were gonna do with our, uh, you know, uh, house. We might still do it, but yeah, uh, you know, if we can convince me otherwise, but yeah. Um, so let's talk about Airbnb then. If a similar house is to be Airbnb. Yeah. What are the upfront costs? Because I'm sure that there are some upfront costs because you have to put furniture, you have to put everything. It, it can't be that, you know, they just move in and get their furniture, right? So yeah. uh, what are the upfront costs in an Airbnb if you have to? Well, the price that you should bank on, like for to do a really amazing investment that's going to be extremely cash flow positive is 600 to 650. That's mm. the price range at the bottom. You can go higher if you want, mm -hmm. but that's the price range that you should definitely consider to get the very- For the house ROI. price, okay, yeah. For the, for the house price. Yeah. Um, and then we need to set it up. So there's going to be just the plain admin fees of setting it up. And then there's going to be the hard cost of furniture mm. and wallpaper and decoration and all the things that it requires, knives, forks, spoons, soap, mm. all that kind of stuff has to go in. So I'd say a fair amount of cash to have on hand would be about 30,000. Oh, okay. Do a great job. And you can't amortize this guys. It cannot be added to the mortgage. So that's the amount that you need to set the Airbnb up. Uh, now let's talk about whether it's worth doing the $25,000, $30,000. Let's talk about cash flow now. So uh, if you're looking at expenses anywhere between, you know, $22,000 to $2,500, how much more expenses are we looking at when we talk about Airbnb? Right, so keep in mind now you're paying utilities. Uh, mm. Whereas with long-term rental, you wouldn't be, your tenants would be paying mm. utilities. So that's now a cost you have to bear. Lawn care and snow removal is something that you have to think about. Mm. Insurance is a little more expensive. Mm. Um, so it's gonna jump up from around 75 a month to about 140 a month, depending okay. on uh, what type of property you have. Um, yeah, cable uh, is something you have to mm. think about. Uh, these are all things you wouldn't pay in a long-term rental. So I think 3,000 a month in the scenario that mm. you described would be, would work. All right, let's talk about the main number now. Okay. <laughs> How much would uh, you rent out, um, you know, the upstairs and the downstairs separately per night? Okay, so um, when you, I should say, the caveat is when you make an excellent Airbnb. Mm -hmm. 
So when you make something that is uh, high quality, high luxury, and that 30,000 will really do that. Mm -hmm. That's gonna get you to that level. Okay. Uh, upstairs, you could expect around 200 to 300 plus. Sometimes that'll go a little higher. When you're making a really high quality mm -hmm. Uh, Airbnb. So we're talking about um, you're, you're pulling out all the stops to make this feel luxury. Mm -hmm. um, you can expect two to three hundred dollars a night upstairs. Sometimes even more than that. Uh, mm. I have a few nights that are booked higher than that, which I'm really excited oh, about. Oh wow! Um, and then the basement is anywhere from seventy-five to one twenty-five, and sometimes mm. higher than that mm. uh, per night. And so, how many nights do you book typically? So when I do numbers for people, I book on 75% occupancy, hmm. but Clint and I have been getting around 80 to 90% occupancy, no sweat. Oh wow, even in the winters? Uh, well, we just opened March 1. Okay, March so 1. So we'll okay. see what happens. Yeah, so if I'm doing the numbers right, it's uh, around $200 upstairs, even if we say that it's 22 uh, you know, nights, that's about four thousand to forty four hundred dollars upstairs and then you have about a hundred dollars coming from downstairs 20 nights you know two thousand dollars so you're looking at about five thousand to seven thousand dollars in um, net revenue like yeah. gross revenue yeah. uh, and then you have expenses of three thousand dollars so is it fair to say that on an average you know month uh, you would get about four thousand dollars of cash flow i think it's very fair to say and, and clint and i have done much 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 higher than that. What's your highest that you've gone? I got 9,700 in bookings for um, for July and my costs are 2,300 a month. Oh, wow. <laughs> Making a killing. July is going to be great. <laughs> oh, nice. And you cover for any downtime that you have during the winters. You okay. really do, right? That's Airbnb. Yeah. And I'm honestly convinced just because of the way that Clint and I handle our pricing, we mm -hmm. handle our pricing so that it's always changing mm -hmm. so that we can um, you know, as booking voids approach, we lower the price to make mm. sure we don't see a lot of vacancy. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I'm convinced that even in the winter, I'm not going to drop below 75% occupancy. Okay. 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 Yeah. And what are kind of people who are coming? So I understand that, you know, uh, now that I know a little bit of Calgary, this is my second trip and I've been driving around. So Northwest, I understand because it's closer to Banff and whatever, right? So Northwest, I understand. I understand uh, why anyone would Airbnb in downtown because, you know, you are coming for business, you're coming for work, you're coming for even, you know, uh, as a tourist, right? So I understand that. But why would you Airbnb in Southeast and Southwest? I understand there are places to go but it's further away from Banff so uh, what is the kind of profile that you are seeing who, uh, people who are living in your Airbnb? Sure so what I say is anybody who would utilize a hotel mm -hmm. is going to get a much better deal on Airbnb hmm, so you can cool. think of anyone whether it's volleyball teams or people who are in between homes as they sell hmm. uh, people coming to visit their kids people coming for family reunions or hmm. weddings that those are all types of people we've had. We've had workers come in from out of town. Mm. You do the math as a consumer. You can come to my gorgeous home. It's 1,800 square feet above grade. It has three bedrooms plus a den. So three full mm. closing beds. Plus the den has two beds. Mm. It has two different family rooms in it. A totally private backyard with a barbecue. Even at the top, that's 300 a night. Mm. And we that's see cool. often two or three families come do the math. Mm. Plus you get a kitchen yeah. um, and you can make your own food. So my family, as I've mentioned, we have seven kids. When we go to McDonald's, it's over $100 a night. Yeah, that's so cool. So when people are traveling, the, the ability to have a kitchen mm. uh, is a huge, huge plus. Mm. So um, I we're not experiencing any trouble finding people. Mm. As long as you do a good job of your listing and you are at the top of the stack, you're going to be booked. And plus, you know, I think uh, people with bigger families, they actually get higher cars when they come, just the way we did. Yeah. Uh, and we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't mind. Even though I have it in my head, no, I want to sit, you know, live in the center. But now that I have lived in the center for the last, you know, five days, yes. it's not like I'm going on walks to, you know, <laughs> to the bridge and stuff like that, right? So It's a very different uh, attitude in Calgary, too. Yeah. We don't care about the center. Yeah. The Calgary center is not cool, like Toronto. I don't know, is Kitchener Center very cool? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Like Calgary so has Calgary. one cool street, 17th. Yeah, 17th, yeah. Um, and that's that's about it. So those are good numbers. Yeah. What are the risks? For ex I, I'll talk about myself, right? So yes. uh, the biggest risk that I see is that I'm not in Ontario yeah. yet, right? So I'm not in Ontario. So how do investors who are, you know, living in Ontario, how, how do they manage that risk? Are there more risks in Airbnb than, you know, a, a normal rental? Right. How, how would you manage that? Yeah, so that is where you're going to be doing professional property management. And mm. you absolutely have to do that with mm. Airbnb because it's not set it and forget it, like long-term rental. Right. Um, you really have to work on getting that those five-star reviews. 
you really do have to create, like you have to make sure that it is getting cleaned extremely well. You never mm. want to have complaints like that. Um, so you really need a property manager that you can trust. Okay. Um, that's going to make sure that they're managing it extremely well so that mm. you don't have to be on site. And do you have like property management companies who do Airbnbs or they're the same ones who are doing the rentals as well? So we offer it. It's, it's part of our white, it's part of the white glove service okay. that we, okay. that we provide. So we set up your Airbnb for you, mm. uh, and it goes seamlessly into property management and Airbnb management. Mm. Um, and so it's tough to find management because it's such a unknown sphere yeah that's true um so that's part of the reason why we set it up oh that's awesome and um what does it cost like is it like 10 percent, 8 percent, 12 percent yeah it's 10 percent of the revenues okay is what it costs and the reason that it has a higher cost is because it's a lot more work hmm. you really like i'm in my airbnb app every couple of days answering questions and i only have one property hmm. um and getting stuff you know clint um because we're managing our own um clint had to leave at 10 o'clock in the night uh, a few weeks ago when it snowed because there was mm. ice on the front walk and they were worried he had to put salt onto the driveway. So just things like that mm. where it's like, it's not like long term where it's like, okay, figure it out. Like mm. you got snow, shovel it. Um, so it is quite a lot more work, but mm. well worth it. Mm. And the property management will do that, you yes. know. Okay. So our property management is always you know they they are trained not to bother the homeowner okay that's awesome yeah. and how about cleaning so how, you know who pays for it how does it happen because cleaning can be every three days right because yes. uh, the guests could live in for three days and then the next guest is coming so how, how do we so the property manager manages that as well absolutely so keep in mind that the cleaning fees are zero sum so mm. i might charge you know 200 a night but that's plus cleaning fees, mm. right? So I have one girl staying in July, she's paying $407 for one night. Okay. Because that is your charge, which is 300 bucks, mm. plus the $99 cleaning fee. Mm. So the cleaning fees are not included in our estimation because they're zero sum. Okay. We charge okay. for them. So that's over and above, those cleaning fees are taken care of. Mm. Um, and it's all arranged by the property manager. Mm. Um, they make sure they go in. If there's any cleaning issues, the property manager has to contact the cleaner and okay. make sure that everything is going well. Okay, that's awesome, that's awesome. I had one more question because I'm staying in downtown uh, and I'm, you know, renting someone else's, you know, I'm doing an Airbnb there uh, and it's a condo. Yeah. So uh, do you think that it would work the same in a condo as well or what are the risks or what are the pros and cons of doing it with a condo because condos will be a lot cheaper yeah. so it could be more on cash flow i don't know it's yeah. it's a, it could be lower risk but what are your views on that so it's possible it's not impossible mm -hmm. um it, it would not be something i personally would undertake okay just because uh, condos are going to be under the authority of the condo board hmm. uh, and every condo you can guarantee that somewhere in one of those units beside there lives a karen Mm. And, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, Sorry, Karen. <laughs> yeah, right? um, and so, you know, if you get called in, if yeah. people don't like it, or generally you, you can get bad guests, this yeah. happens. And yeah. I suppose that to, you know, more to the risk is you can get bad guests. Mm. Um, and so you can end up getting kicked out of your own condo, even if you own it. Mm. Um, most condos, I would say 80 to 90% of condos have it written into your, into their bylaws that there's no short term rentals allowed. Mm. Okay. So that really knocks out most condos mm. from allowing that. And the ones that do allow it, there's so, there's so much risk, um, mm. that it wouldn't be my choice. And the other thing is when you do join ownership, as much as a condo may this year say that you can have short-term rentals can next year decide that you can't yeah and you still own that property oh, that's true actually right yeah. and so and if they decide you can't you can't and mm. there's nothing you can do about it and the management can change and there could be a poor management and you know that's all those right. issues i'm actually facing that in my condo the management has changed and they've changed the rules and right uh, or a neighbor so, yeah. who just hates you yeah and and now it's going to complain about you about every it. day until you get kicked out yeah and and it's not rare i would say it's, it's it's more the rule than the exception, mm. people having trouble in condos. So it's, it is possible, it is just, it's really risky. Um, and then of course, you know, you're not paying as much down on your mortgage, mm. you're subject to possible condo fees, which could have special assessment right. uh, and all that kind of stuff as well. So, mm. yeah. And 
is there any uh, like from an airbnb it's a short term rental right so uh, are there any rules from airbnb as well that you have to make a bigger insurance because there could be more liability because there are more people staying in the house in a month yeah uh, so how, how does that work good question so we it took me forever hmm. to find an insurance company that would insure oh really yeah okay. it's not easy okay. um and so i finally found one that would insure um so it is they the insurance company gives you standard home insurance, fire, flood, okay. earthquake, um, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But Airbnb has something called air cover and that covers you up to a million dollars in damages. Oh wow. So okay. if the guests have a party and destroy some stuff, mm -hmm. Airbnb has their credit card, Airbnb has their uh, identification, Airbnb will go after the guest and they'll reimburse you for the damages. Mm. Um, so that that is a comfort. Um, there's mixed reviews on how effective air cover is okay. just ha from having done a lot of research um, that sometimes maybe they're not as easy to pay as they should be. Okay. Um, but it is there. Hmm. Got it. One very stupid question. No. Has it happened and I hope it doesn't, right? So if the guests break the sofa, yeah. for instance, right? Yes. And the next guests have to come in the same night, you know, when you figure out the sofa is broken. So how do you manage that? Like who pays for that then? Because the guests are coming in yes. and you're liable to give them the space, right? Absolutely. You would literally have to go out and buy a sofa on the spot and oh. replace it as quick as you can. Then you deal with it afterwards, right? You have to make mm. room for the next guest. Mm. Um, of course, if you can't do that, I'm sure guests would be understanding that this happened. Mm. Uh, but because you're so chasing those five star reviews, you're still mm. trying to make those great experiences for your guests. Um, you do want to go over and above. That's what mm. hopefully the property manager would be able to do is mm. get it replaced as soon as possible and deal with air cover later. And to be honest, that's where I now understand that 11 a.m. you know checkouts and 4 p.m. Yes. check ins so that you have enough time to deal with any unforeseen you know yes. things that happen in between. And, and it's true. People ask me all the time, can I check in early? I'm like, you literally can't. Yeah. I one cleaner. Yeah. It does take her all four hours to clean the whole home. So no, you can't. You, I always say you can drop your luggage, mm. but you can't come in early. All right. Perfect. And like you, Rachel, uh, I still have to talk to Simran, but yeah. I am actually thinking of Airbnb, uh, you know, my place. Uh, I just want to understand, you know, uh, how how it is. And it, I almost airbnb my condo in yeah. Kitchener, uh, but I just felt that we just got long term tenants and I was like, OK, you know, you know what it's. But here I think I can do that. So, do you know, it. yeah, I'm always going to be here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to make sure that your condo, or that your house does amazing. That's awesome. So, guys. That was um, understanding how to Airbnb uh, an investment property. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, Rachel has good people and she's setting up, you know, good people. Uh, the vital of service that Rachel was talking about, uh, which will take care of end to end, uh, right from buying the house, you know, all the way to, um, you know, getting cash flow and putting money in the bank accounts. And guys, uh, if you have any questions about, you know, uh, investment properties, Airbnb, you can obviously call me, but Rachel, a lot of you have actually talked to Rachel uh, when we bought our house. Um, she's amazing. And, um, you know, her husband is amazing. A lot of my clients have actually uh, bought houses from Clint as well. So, uh, you know, they are both very amazing people and they actually walk the talk, right? So they are not the kind of people who will say, oh, buy this, buy that. And that was my one of the few questions that I asked Rachel, how many houses do you have in Southeast? And she said, oh, you know, four or five, right? So I always try to six, right? So I always try to follow people who have done what I am trying to do. And that's what Rachel does. So I'm really happy that we met. And thank you so much, Rachel, for first taking us through your amazing home and then walking us through your Airbnb journey as well. Always good to see you. All right. Yeah. Perfect. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. Milte hain video mein. Tab tak ke liye. Bye bye.